Hello, welcome to First Fridays in the Exchange. It's the art talk tonight. And our topic today is We Rock, Mentorship as Art. And our guests tonight are Brandy Olenek and Ava Ray. And before we really get started, I'm just going to do a couple of thanks. Thanks to uh, First Fridays, the board, and Karen Schulz, who does so much work, uh, as well as my co-moderator, who is not here today, Sarah hodges Kalisnik. Thanks also to our sponsors, the Winnipeg Free Press, thank you so much, as well as the Manitoba Arts Council and Winnipeg Arts Council. So I just want to, uh, before we go any further, do a land acknowledgement. So First Fridays was started to encourage people to come to the Exchange District in Winnipeg. And we acknowledge that the Exchange District is located within Treaty 1 territory, the original lands of the Anishinaabeg, Nahiao, Ojukri, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis. Our water here in Winnipeg has been taken from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation in Treaty 3 territory, and our hydroelectric power mainly comes from the hydroelectric dam projects in Treaty 5. And we'd like to work towards greater understanding and acting on how to decolonize art, artistic practice, public discourse, and ourselves. Just want to take another moment to say what's actually on this July 1st. So today, July 1st, a lot of activities already happened during the day. Um, uh, the Plant Lab Botanical Design was on today uh, and will be open all weekend too. Um, as well, uh, Creatory Gallery was open till five and will be open again tomorrow from uh, 11 till five. There were some fantastical works by Susan Birdwise, Shosh Shalav Manouk, and by Idra Suja Greeley and Agnes Neufeldt, who will be in attendance tomorrow. So uh, Jackie Traverse's studio is open today at 63 Albert from six to nine and open again tomorrow and Saturday night at those same times. Recording um, in progress. Um, the uh, Ruby Daria Gallery at 123 or 132 James Street open from six to nine tonight. And at tonight uh, Utopia, the comedy show returns with headliner MCAPs. Uh, there's also, it's like a hip hop and comedy night. So that's pretty exciting. That's at 87 King. And there's a new theater and gallery. I think it's called All About Theater and Gallery. So that's a new venue on McDermott that you might want to check out too. Um, we have many sponsors and, and members of the First Friday Art Talk or First Friday's community, um, of which the Art Talk is a part. Um, so you can check out uh, that and what's happening at our website at www.firstfridayswinnipeg.org. And uh, if you want to just go down to the exchange, um, there's like lots of stuff happening um, at the Cube throughout the month. The Fringe Festival will overwhelm uh, the exchange district uh, as it usually beautifully does in July. So it's very exciting to have the Fringe back after a while. And um, speaking of coming back, the Art Talk and Art Walk, uh, we're uh, looking at re resuming in September. But next month on August 5th, we've got um, uh, Kelly Campbell is going to be talking about their work uh, as a printmaker uh, and also uh, their work at Art Space this summer. So that's a little preview of what's uh, of our next online talk. And then we're going to uh, hopefully resume the art talks in person. Pretty exciting. Yes. So i um, just going to take a moment to um, introduce our guests. So, um, so our first uh, guest is uh, Brandy, and I'm just going to read your bio, Brandy. So at the good at the invitation of a good friend, Brandy volunteered at Adult Rock Camp, um, which is a fundraiser for Girls Rock Saskatoon. After that, Brandy dreamed of a better musical life in Winnipeg. She wanted to create the space here because girls and queer need a safe place to play together. And she'll tell you more better reasons herself. Brandy asked herself, what if this had existed when I was a kid? Brandy plays guitar with her partner in a punk cover band called Off Henderson. 
and we rock Winnipeg uh, as a volunteer-led nonprofit organization aims to provide small female and gender variant musical role models for the campers. We Rock believes that when you see someone like you doing someone you yourself want to do, then you can realize it's possible. And We Rock Winnipeg is a member of an international movement called Girls Rock Alliance and Winnipeg's chapter changed their name to reflect the gender diversity of its surrounding community. Um, and Ava Ray is a musician and creator based in Winnipeg. She's been performing regularly since 2010, playing guitar, bass, and synthesizer in numerous groups whose genres spanned indie folk, country rock, new wave, and jazz. She also writes music for her indie pop duo, Bicycle Face, with whom she has released two EPs, created music videos, toured Western Canada, and recorded a full-length outer space-themed concept album to be released in fall 2022. As a solo guitarist, she performs original compositions and arrangements of pop and jazz tunes under the name Ava Ray, and is currently working on an experimental guitar album featuring her own compositions, as well as creative interpretations of jazz standards. Ava holds a Bachelor of Music in Jazz Performance from Brandon University and has taught private guitar lessons since 2008. And when not practicing or performing, she enjoys writing fiction, spending time in nature, and volunteering as a board member, guitar instructor, and band coach for We Rock Winnipeg. So welcome, both of you. It's so nice to have you here, um, here in this virtual space. <laughs> So, Brandy, uh, let's start with you. I know I mentioned like a bit about what is we rock, we rock Winnipeg in the in the bio, but can you tell us um, what is we rock Winnipeg? Well, we're a volunteer-led nonprofit organization um, that our mission is to empower youth and adults um, that are female, trans, non-binary, two-spirit folks through the creation of uh, music and community. Um, so our what we're working on right now is our third youth camp. Um, it's a six day camp, day camp. And uh, we take kids this year, we're doing ages 10 to 15, but it's normally ages 10 to 14. Um, and they learn an instrument, guitar, bass, drums, uh, keyboards and vocals, and they form a band and within the six days they write an original song they record this song and then they will perform it at the end of the week at the west end cultural center in front of a big audience of friends family and community members that is a big week-long project how did you first think of starting um starting this camp well, a friend of mine, I used to live in Saskatoon for a few years and a friend of mine was touring with her band, the Garys in Winnipeg. So we went to go see them and hung out with her after. And uh, she was telling me all about this Girls Rock Saskatoon. So I was like, that sounds so cool. She's like, it was life changing for her. So I, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna volunteer for the one in Winnipeg since we're like three times the size of Saskatoon, you'd think Winnipeg and we're such a music city, we'd have one. But I did my research and there wasn't anything in the city. So I just took it as a calling that I needed to start it myself. So I went on the venture of, you know, getting the business registered and going through like planning a fundraising show to get kind of like marketing out there and stuff. And then that's when the West End Cultural Center kind of like stumbled upon me and uh, Kate Friesen uh, facilitated our meeting and she thought we should partner up together. And that's kind of where it all kind of began. And and uh, we started developing as a board and as a whole organization. Um, so can you can you talk about um, like other supports besides Kate and the West End that you had to start this organization and sort of the broader the broader world and origins of uh, Girls Rock Camp Alliance? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Girls Rock Saskatoon was a huge support, as well as Girls Rock Regina were starting up at the same time. Um, there's something called the Girls Rock Camp Alliance, which is basically um, an organization to uh, bring everybody together and get this movement going. It's a worldwide movement. There's over 100 camps worldwide. 
um, and they have a conference every year and you attend this conference and it gives you ideas, it gets you networking, it builds community and everybody just wants to share uh, information so that you can get this started and uh, have the most successful camp possible. Well, cool. so um, the first uh, the first rock camp was like in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. So the history of how Girls Rock Camp started was uh, it was somebody's thesis uh, for their master's, I believe, um, in 2001 about this camp and how it would um, work to have like girls and, and trans and non-binary and basically intersectional feminism um and push that into a camp as their thesis and then they tried it out and then it just kind of continued and spanned from there so that started in 2001. cool very cool um so um uh, can you i think it's so cool to um you know for an organization who is looking to um to expand and, and move to other um cities and just sort of be a community building you know Wor like world and resource that there's like a there's a toolkit so so people can like learn about how to like make sure you have an NGO uh, status or yeah. or you have like your your is it a corporation status or a company status or what? yeah we're we're in, we're incorporated here in Canada so it, it's different it's it's nice that they also like when you do go to the conferences they they kind of put you into not not all the time like they'll give you time to meet with a caucus so they have different kind of caucuses where there's a canadian one so like i met with people from canada whoever came with the camp um which was like from saskatoon regina lethbridge toronto montreal kind of thing um and it was just whoever was attending at the camp there or at the conference and then uh, other people that we'll meet will be like people um like there's a trans caucus there's like a poverty caucus and stuff and really what it's meant do is just to help these groups get together to facilitate how to remove barriers for them and then to pass this information along to the rest of the um, camp as, like the camps that are involved in the girls rock camp alliance so that all this information is shared so that we're reducing our barriers for all those uh, folks as well that's awesome. Um, let's uh, let's sort of give um, Ava sort of a chance to talk uh, as a as a professional musician. So, can you tell us about you know what it means uh, and has meant in your life for you to um, to be have been mentored and also to mentor? Yeah, for sure. So. I've been playing guitar, I'm a guitarist here in Winnipeg. I've been playing since I was 12 years old uh, and my parents always played music for fun. So I kind of, that was my start, my dad teaching me Beatles tunes. I've also been just super lucky in terms of the opportunities to be mentored or even just kind of practically taught skills. Uh, in school, I was in a jazz band and then jazz combo. And we also had a class called uh, CP Express School's Crocus Plains, where they put you, you got to audition in and they put you in a rock band and teach you all these skills for being in a band and working with other people, learning songs and writing songs. And then we go on tour to the, the younger schools in the area. Um, and I feel super lucky for those opportunities because as soon as I started playing guitar, I felt like, oh, I wanna be in a band and I, could barely even picture what that might look like at the time, just coming from kind of a small place. Uh, and I feel like those kind of structured opportunities in school uh, enabled me to get those skills, whereas kind of the guys I knew in high school would never have invited me into a band or kind of asked me to play with them or made me feel welcome doing that. So that uh, kind of allowed me to get the same types of skills that they had and to be able to form those be parts of those communities later on when people are more open, I think, to having different kinds of people in music. Um, yeah, so after high school, I got a jazz degree at uh, Brandon University, and then I moved to Winnipeg and have been uh, playing in bands here for the last 10 years ever since. And that's kind of a, I feel like a different and equally beautiful kind of mentorship where you get to form these communities and it's not as much like a formal teaching experience, but you get to learn so much from each other 
uh, and teaching each other and developing communities and figuring a lot of things out as a band while you're actively creating together. So that's been really awesome too. Um, I've also been teaching guitar since I was 16, so I've been on kind of the other side of the teaching and mentorship uh, role as well, and that's been a really great experience. And yeah, I kind of love sharing that joy of music with students, kids, and grown-up students too. So it sounds like um, it sounds like there's a lot of peer um, peer types of mentorship. Um, kind of going on for you uh, since he moved to Winnipeg, like within the community and learning from each other. Um, a lot of like working it out together um, kind of thing. Yeah, I think that when you form a band and when you book a show or record an album or do anything that requires bringing people together, you're forming a community and you're making a space where people can feel safe. Uh, you can, uh, and basically create the difference between people being able to experience the, the joyful and fun and community building side of music or experience a music scene that is exclusionary or makes them feel judged or makes them feel unsafe in other in serious ways. And uh, yeah, so I feel like that community, community building uh, and the mentorship are key and kind of creating those environments that we're always working towards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, that safety feeling, I mean, is really important in music because of the way um, people self-express in music. Like in order to do your best, you have to have some, some level of like either, you know, of relaxation or like of, of having a memory of having felt relaxed, you know, yeah. or some way to, to get, sorry, some way to get like what's inside outside. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You need to feel comfortable to, to be creative and to, I think really effectively collaborate with other people. And, and yeah, I think the key to that is more, well, in the case of um, gender equality, so having more women, trans, non-binary people in the music scene, not just in like singer, songwriter, and front person roles, of course we need those and we need those people to feel comfortable too, but in roles as session musicians, as sound people, as recording engineers, as bookers and managers, like we need all of these things in order to create a community that where everyone can really flourish in that way. And I think the key to that is with kids, like we gotta, we gotta start young because of course there, there are issues uh, in the adult music world that we do need to address. Uh, difficulty getting gigs, difficulty getting paid for gigs for women or marginalized identities, uh, being harassed or worse, all of these things where, yeah, we need to educate gatekeepers and take care of those things maybe on a like structural or policy basis but I do think like the biggest thing is with kids and and just enabling people to grow up into that community where those things aren't tolerated because there there are enough people that are booking the shows and that are gatekeeping uh, or allowing different identities to be represented uh, that it stops being an issue yeah, I was thinking about um, about uh, just what you had, what you um, were were talking about when you were playing in your first rock band and with in school, and uh, and how you said like in high school there were these like other folks who would never have let you play in their band. So what kind of is happening? I mean. Obviously, when people start playing, they're bad. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to be able to be bad. <laughs> and uh, in my experience, like these these guys I knew in my particular high school, it's, of course, it's going to be totally different for everybody. But you know, they weren't bad dudes at all. It's just people play with their friends, and at that age, mm -hmm. um, friendships can be exclusionary. It's you know, it's based on different things than what your skill level is. 
And if you don't get that chance to be bad with other people like those guys we're doing together, you're not going to be able to be as good as they are in a few years. You're not going to have had that opportunity to collaborate, to play with other people and to get comfortable in those situations where you can express yourself. And uh, yeah, so kids need to be able to have that opportunity uh, so that, yeah, when you, I find now that I'm an adult, people are much more open to, <laughs> to playing with me. And I know it's totally different in different communities. And I'm super lucky because I'm in the indie scene, which I think is a little bit more open. Um, but yeah, you have, to, you have to have had that opportunity earlier on in order to, I think, even have the confidence to see yourself in those communities. Hmm. So let's, uh, I think about, you know, oh, you have to have the opportunity to be bad. So let's bring it back to the rock camp. So in one week, <laughs> so in one week, a bunch of children um, just begin to play and then are performing on stage at the end of the week. So um, uh, let's uh, we've got some some visuals here for uh, what happens at the at the rock camp. Let's look at the first half of the slideshow where we see all the instruments. So there's a uh, brandy. Perhaps you could talk about um, so sort of what's happening here, right there. That is the room. drum. That's the drum lesson room there. So we have an instructor. There's probably two instructors there. I think you can see Mandy holding up drumsticks in the bottom corner there, and they're all playing to a beat. And I think there's uh, Jody's also on a kit there, um, given a beat, and Mandy's trying to be the metronome, I think. And uh, yeah, so that's the the uh, drum lesson room. And then that's our keyboards. Um, so we have all the kids lined up there and- uh, There's Claire Therese from uh, Claire Therese on the lockdown. Yes, we have so many amazing mentors that are part of our community with uh, We Rock Winnipeg. It's, it's pretty mind boggling actually. And Domo, Domo Lemoyne from Alamode is there? Yes, yeah. You play with her. I play with both of them, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that's the guitar room. And we name all of our rooms too. So actually our guitar room is called the Laura Jane Grace room. And our keyboard room is Alicia Keys. And our bass room changes, but I think last year, last time it was the Kim Deal room. And then our drum room is Sheila E. And, um, and our vocals was Aretha Franklin. Ooh. Yeah. So we try to have an inspiring name. So then we, and then we know what, what the rooms are called. So yeah. So let's, uh, this and is like a robot there teaching guitar as well. So this is like a row of bass. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the bass. We learn uh, uh, from Ashley Ow there, who is quite an accomplished musician and also went on our board of directors. Um, Ashley is in uh, Super Duty Tough Work, which is like a really hip hop based um, organizing like band. Yeah, so they're very good. Yeah. Do you find that like some of the some of the campers are sort of really more into hip hop or are I think some of them could be, but it's not just rock music. We're just in for musical expression. So if they want to um rap or put some hip-hop beats in there or do something like that like whatever you could whatever you want to create we're game very cool um so um let's like move into so this is what happens sort of like building it do you have all these um all these campers who are learning their instruments um, so then by the end of the, uh, like, do your teachers coordinate so that people are kind of learning the same groups of things so they yeah. can play together easily or? Yeah, we try to teach the, the same key chords as we're going to learn on the guitar and, and the bass so that there's like similarities that they can mesh with and they'll have the same knowledge level kind of going into the band as well. And then uh, when the kids are in the band, uh, they have what's called a band coach as one of their mentors. And this mentor uh, needs to be um, a musician as well as had played in a band and stuff like that so that they can 
you know, uh, they're basically the band's producer. They keep everybody on track and they can help them play their instrument a little bit. And then we also, for the kids camp, we have a band manager, which really helps out the campers and um, can hold up lyrics, write them down, help them with their creativity, like, um, and uh, kind of just help get equipment and things moved around as well, but, uh, and helps the coach out. So yeah, lots of hands on deck. That is, um, I love that idea, you know, just um, how you really kind of gather a community. Um, this slide right here, can you talk about who is in this slide right here? Um, well, that is April Blackbird. Um, she was on our board and she's been so busy with her film career. She's, um, but she was helping out uh, with makeup and hair. And I'm not sure, I can't remember the girl's name sitting beside April. And then in the middle, that's Stephanie from Mise en Scene. And that is, I believe that's Olivia um, from the Manitoban. And then um, with the uh, ban red bandana, that is Joanne Rodriguez from the Sorrells. And they were all there doing hair and makeup for the kids on the Saturday before the big show. Cool. What, a, what an amazing sort of team you know at the end yeah. of the you know you don't have to worry about i mean there's there's so much to like the visual presentation you know of people when they're performing you know if you have like a team of people like really helping you out um it makes a big difference you don't have to like you know spend the time to go like decide what your makeup is going to be or you don't have to like spend the time to figure out what you're gonna do it looks like a lot of the um some of those like children are wearing like the same t-shirts yeah so that's another thing that we do um so they figure out what their band name is going to be and then they create a logo and then floodway print company in the exchange actually prints them and they do a wonderful job uh, we pre-order the shirts and they get them done for us by the friday so that they can all wear them for the saturday show and That's, it's, it's it's their creation they made that logo so it's it's really cool and it's a really nice keepsake Totally. And just a, a whole, you know, when you see all the all the campers together, you know, there's um, it's just so it's kind of like a unifying thing. It's like, a, you know, you don't have to go and raid your closet for like, oh, my God, I don't have a sparkly dress or like, yeah. oh, no, where's we don't all have the same bow tie, you know, sort of kind of thing. Um, I remember one Halloween, I went to the Mawa uh, or was to the Mawa birthday party and I dressed, I had like a tux, um, a tux shirt and a bow tie and a hat and a tambourine. And my costume was, I had another like bow tie attached to just the false tux front and an extra tambourine. So I went around telling people they were late for our tambourine duo gig and <laughs> so they put the bow tie on and the thing and then we play tambourine for a minute and it's super fun <laughs> anyway the visual aspect of performing is certainly a big deal like look at all these all these folks so what is the backdrop of um of that they're the behind they're behind that's um one of the built buildings it's on ellis and that side is i think on furby there it's right by the western cultural center so it's a pretty beautiful um, mural and we think it looks really good as a backdrop. It totally does. Yeah. So, um, so these, so they have like, these campers have specific like instrument mentorship. They have like working together mentorship. They have, you know, the mentorship of, of, of the visual uh, presentation at the end. Um, Ava, can you talk a little bit about, uh, oh, and here they are performing um, at the end. So, I mean, if there are, how many bands do you, do you end up with at the uh, end? We have week? 25 campers and we split them into five bands. Okay, so five bands, that's a lot of, like, it's just half an hour of music, basically, but, yep. but, but five brand new birthed songs in the world. Yeah, that's like incredible. That's quite incredible. It's very magical, and uh, you'd actually be blown away at how good they are. <laughs> nice. Oh, like someone has totally pink hair. So, yeah. do you find that? Um, I guess I'll I'll just say, do you find that uh, people really like transform? 
you know, um, like what sort of happens for, for these campers, you know, during the week? Well, um, so when they first show up on the Monday, they're very, very shy. Like maybe one of them knows another camper cause they signed up together or something like that. But for the most part, like they're strangers and they come in and they're very shy. No one's talking. Everybody's kind of like really reserved by the Wednesday. <laughs> it is loud. First thing in the morning, everybody's laughing and having a good time. Like it, it you just see this change and, and everybody just becomes so much more comfortable and confident and just knows that this is such a safe, accepting space. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like in little, in little pods where they have to work together. Yes. Yes. Um, and yeah, and work together at something that they're still new at, which is hard, but it gives everybody's on the same page, right? Everybody's on the same playing field in that sense. So there's, it takes away the competition when you're not trying to outshine anybody. You're just trying to learn and work as a group and, and be together. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, so as far as like the visual aspect of playing, maybe Ava, we could uh, talk to you about the visual aspect that um, you bring into your performance as a musician. Yeah, I feel like costuming and stage presence can be uh, like you were kind of talking about uh, with your tie and everything. It's kind <laughs> of an art all in, all in its own, which could be, yeah, totally another really interesting and fun part of performing. I think it allows you, if you're into dressing up and costumes and stuff, allows you to kind of try on new identities or uh, just to kind of step out of yourself while you're performing. I feel like you can, it can kind of, uh, it gives you an opportunity. I mean, it can be either way. It can be you expressing something really true to yourself or you get to be a character and try something totally different. So performance is so fun in that way. Um, and I think from an audience perspective, it allows people to see um, different identities represented, whether those are identities in the real world that need to be seen more um, or in totally imaginary and wild, creative, made up personas. <laughs> so we get that whole kind of spectrum of interesting things. Yeah. For example, I played in a band called RoboJum where we dressed up as uh, like futuristic cyborg robots and uh, yeah our front person is a wild modern dancer so there was a huge vis visual aspect to the show like set decoration these crazy costumes and just like the whole vibe and smoke and her doing backflips and all this crazy wild stuff while singing while pregnant sometimes <laughs> and uh, yeah so that's, that can be really fun. But yeah, there's also, I think, anything that involves kind of a visual element, there can be the flip side too. I'm not a huge dresser upper. And I remember like in my early bands in Winnipeg, um, for instance, being told when a good friend of mine opened for us and wore this awesome red velvet dress and she looked so cool. And then my bandmates being like, Eva, you should have a style. You're just business casual all the time. <laughs> I was like, I wear the same thing as you. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think that um, um, there's yeah that flip side to it too, which maybe gets more serious in like mainstream and music industry things where uh, you hear about. Well, I've had friends who are more in that stream who I've heard talk about like they get into that and suddenly they're just surrounded by grown-up men who are like writing their songs for them and and kind of controlling what their show looks like maybe even how they present all kinds of things like that so so yeah I think visual presentation and performance and what uh, freedom you have to use those tools to express yourself can be a huge thing. Um, just sort of like on the on the image, um, just a little little aside. But uh, I saw a Jimmy, no, a Seth Meyers, um, a couple of Seth Meyers uh, videos on YouTube of um, Elliot Page introducing his new season of the Umbrella Academy, and um, they a few days before that interview they showed. Uh, 
Elliot Page before his transition. And then they showed him after his transition and he's still wearing like the same white button up shirt and huge Navy blazer. Um, but it is like short hair. And then, but in the show, um, he also transitions. So I think like, I, I don't, I think not everybody has the, the power or the atmosphere or the, like the colleagues, you know, to be able to, to do that, to, to make that work. I think it's, um, you know, it's very special when you can, you know, be yourself at that tier, you know, of performance. And I know it's not like rock or anything, but still it's, um, it's a big deal. Totally. Yeah. Um, I, I have another, uh, story about <laughs> sort of a local person that we, that, um, is, is well known, but this person had like a solo show at the pyramid and was like standing there playing bass, singing. And then on the side had like a little, um, like a little computery beat keyboard MIDI hookup thing. And, um, and the person was like, they're busy. Like the performance is busy. They're like doing a lot of stuff, you know, all at the same time, multitasking and lots of like computing went into the show. Um, but this person had not spent much time on the wardrobe and was wearing like jeans and a super baggy t-shirt. And people were just like loving the, like they were loving that they were there watching this person. <laughs> And I just thought, oh, this is maybe the standard, you know, like if I ever feel bad, if I'm going to go out on a gig and not, um, not be dressed well enough, I'm like, jeans and t-shirt suits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder, because yeah, that person, I think I know who you're talking about, super awesome, accomplished musician in the scene. And of course, yeah, could get away with that, like, people love his music but yeah I have wondered if there's a double standard where it's like mm, could I do that though <laughs> and uh, could I would it be accepted in the same way I think that's still something that's yeah maybe in the right crowd uh, <laughs> and not in others still maybe something to think about and and that we need to work towards mm -hmm. um so let's uh I, I just want to ask, uh, like, sort of, um, we've got a video that we're going to come up on. But first, uh, Brandy, um, I just wanted to mention uh, something that I, that I, uh, a piece of visual art, which is a, a movie, which was Girls Rock, exclamation point. Um, it was really in movie. Yeah, it was released in 2008, and uh, it follows the stories of three young girls through their week at the rock and roll camp for girls in Portland, Oregon. So um, there's three girls from very different ages with very different backgrounds, and uh, the film ultimately explores uh, what happens to the girls when they're given a temporary reprieve from being sexualized, analyzed, and with a pressure to conform. Um, Brandy, can you talk about what it takes to actively support each other and make community and what We Rock Winnipeg does to foster this within the camp? Yeah, that's basically like our mission and our vision and our core values is to foster this community and uh, create the safest space we can. So to create the safe space, we make sure that it's judgment free. We make sure that everybody can come as you are. Um, and like I was talking before is we take away the competition. So there is no, you know, uh, feeling bad about uh, you can't play this one chord on guitar, but somebody else can like it's just we're here to help. We're here to um, mentor you and, and stuff. And also having mentors who reflect our campers. So like seeing being able to see themselves in there. So we, we do really focus on having female, having trans and having non-binary folks and people of color and indigenous representation as mentors at camp. Um, we find that's really important. Um, and um, we also uh, have a power support position. So um, having preteens and teens come to camp, there's a lot of hormones and emotions and stuff. And camp can be emotional. Like we don't just do music. We do a lot of social justice workshops as well to see where the campers like to show them where they fit in the world. We 
there's um, stuff on um, body positivity. There's things on, we have this called Humans Talking, where we have a panel of artists and um, queer people and females in the community that will come and talk for an hour and a half with the campers and the campers can ask anonymous questions to them and how um, they, you know, got through their adolescence and things like that. Um, that one's always proven to be like a huge tearjerker for all the volunteers, um, but it, it's, it's just a really powerful one. Um, fostering community within their band and working together and having the same goal, that's another idea that we have as well as we do this thing called the shout out wall. Um, we have this huge uh, paper uh, poster up on the side of the wall um, in the big theater. And we encourage all the campers to go up. We have a box of markers and volunteers too, to go up and write only positive messages about an experience or about somebody or something. So it'll be like, you know, Ava, you really like shredded on the guitar today. Or, um, wow, lunch was amazing, thanks, Subway. Or, my coach is great. Or, I loved this workshop. And it's just, by the end of the week, this huge uh, wall of paper gets filled with all these colors of, of different writing and different things. And it's just really something to take home. And then we also have a camp song that we sing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think that also builds community because you feel like you're a part of this, like, really cool thing that's so much bigger than you but yet it's it's like you're part of it so yeah oh so um what you sent me a, a video that was created in 19 maybe let's have a look at that so this feature can you talk about the video like what is the what's happening in the video okay yeah so um the campers record their song so this is like taken from their recording and then it's put it to this video. So we had Emily Granger come in and do uh, music videos for the campers that one year. And so she had like a green screen and all these like kind of editing tools and stuff. So she put it together. It was one of their workshops that they did. So this one's called, I think this is by the Fierce Felines and it's their song and it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Great. Let's have a look at that. is opening what's happening there roller coaster of doom would you even dare cats claws of fire shivering up your spine the situation is becoming dire we are the fierce feline get in the car you're locked inside will you run or hide will you Get in the car, you're locked inside. Will you run or hide? Will you live or die? What an exit. I think that was in their song. They talked about being on a roller coaster. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the like, live or die. 
nine deaths or nine lives, <laughs> yeah. nine deaths. It's so metal. <laughs> And I think they wore cat ears for their final showcase show. <laughs> yeah, while they're singing nine lives. Nine <laughs> oh my god, that's so cute. Okay. Um, so um can you talk a little bit a, a little bit, Brandy, about what um so the alliance is girls rock when you started the organization it was girls rock um when you call it we rock like how are you re maintaining your your draw to um to the people you're trying to to get to your camp well when we first started the organization like and even the girls rock camp alliance acknowledges it and they're in the process of doing a name change on, amongst many other camps that have already done it but uh through covid um we just thought it was a really good time to actually take a look at it and discover what we could change the name to um we always found it a little bit problematic and and we want to be inclusive not exclusive and for who we represent at camp and who we want to know that we want to include in camp or female, trans, non-binary, two-spirit folks. And girls just doesn't represent everybody who identifies um, within who we want to represent. So that's why um, we decided to go with the name change. So now we are We Rock Winnipeg. So we're um, inclusive, we find that name. And we kind of go, We Rock Winnipeg, and you can too. So. Excellent. Um, and so, uh, do you still have um, some spots open at camp? Oh yeah, we still actually have six spots available at camp. Um, tuition is on a sliding scale, so zero to $400, um, and it's just whatever you can afford to pay. We have meals included and all your uh, supplies at camp, all um, uh, instrument rentals and everything's included with all that, and your t-shirt and, and everything. Um, and yeah, so camp is at the West End Cultural Center, which is at 586 Ellis in the West End. Um, and it takes place August 15th to 20th this year. So it goes from Monday to the Saturday is the big showcase day. And so can you talk about sort of the effect of having just like really a, even though it's a day camp, like having all the meals, having all the instruments, having like a common um, shirt and everything provided, like, can you tell me about like what the meaning of the equalizing force of that is? Well, that's just what, what it is. It's like equalizing, right? It's like equity in itself. It's building this community of having meals together. Nobody's excluded and we don't want anybody to go hungry. Um, it, it's a very long day. It gets kind of intense at times with having to learn and, and collaborate with people and and you need to be well fed and nourished. And, and we find that that's like a really good start and everybody should have the ability to do that. We don't want to exclude anybody. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And eating together is such a, a powerful group. It is, yeah. And while you eat together, we always have a band performance. So we have a local group that will come in and uh, serenade the campers and the volunteers while we eat. Fun. That sounds so fun. Yeah, it offers inspiration to the campers, so it's really cool. And so um, I'm just going to say uh, a couple more things, which is like, so so you have like the, um, you have the campers have a sliding scale, so you must have like some backup funding. Well, yeah, we do our best to do that. This last couple of years has been really tough because of COVID, because um, usually we'll have like a fundraising event with like bands and stuff like that. And and we'll ha like have like silent auction or just like make money off the door of, of the show. Um, but obviously COVID's kind of restricted that. Um, we didn't actually know until this February that we were going to be able to host one this year. Um, so we've kind of missed opportunities to apply for grants as well. So we're, we're really hoping that um, we can get some more funding within the next uh, two months here. And, uh, um, but yeah, we always operate on a real shoestring budget and it comes through, we, we get it done. Nice. Um, do you want to like talk about the, your instrument sponsor as well? Oh yeah. So Long McQuaid uh, on Wall Street is uh, 
donating, well, not donating, they're giving us our instruments uh, rentals for the week at 50% cost, which is huge. That saves us a ton of money, uh, especially a year when we really need it. Awesome. Um, so, uh, Ava, do you want to say anything more about uh, Girls Rock? I'll give you the last word before I take the very last word. <laughs> Oh, I just think it's fabulous and <laughs> such a great opportunity. I hope more, increasingly more kids can have that opportunity as we, as the camp grows and gets, gets going again post pandemic. Excellent. So Ava, where can we see you uh, coming up this summer? Where can we see you play? Um, I'm playing at uh, the Fringe Festival with Claire Therese in the Lockdown and also with my band Bicycle Face. Uh, I'm playing with uh, A La Mode, my other band, um, Date TBA in July. Um, those are the main things I have coming up this summer. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Ray W R A Y dot music and on TikTok at the same place if you want to see me play guitar or keep abreast of what my bands are doing. Cool. And Brandy, where can people find out more about We Rock Winnipeg? Uh, well, we have a website, www.werockwinnipeg, all one word, um, spelled fully, uh, .com. Um, Facebook and Instagram as well. We rock Winnipeg. We uh, still need campers and we still need volunteers. So yeah, if oh, and we need money. So if you want to donate as well, or if you want to donate your time, uh, we'd love to have you. So what kind of um, volunteer positions are you still looking for? We're looking for all of them actually. Um, we uh, need a keyboard instructor. Um, we need uh, mentors, so we need uh, band coaches and band managers. Band coaches require the musical experience, where band uh, managers don't require any musical experience at all. We need people to help with meals. Um, we need people to help with gear loading and like getting it from Long Quaid at the WEC, setting up, decorating, and then we need people to help take it back to Long Quaid at the end of the week. Well, and when is the camp? Uh, it is August 15th to August 20th and all at the West End Cultural Center. Well, the end show is at the West End Cultural Center. It is, yeah, at West End Cultural Center at 2 p.m. on August 20th. Cool, that sounds so much fun. Well, uh, thank you too so much for uh, chatting with me um, today. I also want to thank uh, Aaron at Collective Broadcast for um, for accommodating uh, this um, this live feed, um, you can you may or may not have found this talk on our website at www.firstfridayswinnipeg.org. Um, in the and you can check the what's on section there for other things that are happening uh, today and this weekend. So maybe a little bit less today and a little bit more this weekend. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors again for this art talk, the Manitoba Arts Council, the Winnipeg Arts Council, and the Winnipeg Free Press. So thank you so much and um, hope you have a very lovely weekend and a great summer and good luck with your rock camp in August. Thanks, Suze. Thanks, Suze.